I set the tempo to 128 BPM. Before we start, all the sounds in this project are built from my new pack. It's a powerful collection of 800 samples across 40 essential production categories, along with 115 presets in 17 categories to help you find the perfect sound you're looking for. You can find the full specifications in the description. For today's project, I'm starting with some LFO vocal melodies and we'll see where it takes me. I've adjusted the parameters so that they align perfectly with the length of the notes in the piano roll. To make things easier, I highlighted the scale I'll be working in. I changed the resample mode to stretch so that the LFO remains consistent when I adjust the pitch since I'm working with a sample. Now I'll build a melody note the little triangle on the blocks in the piano roll. This will make the notes slide. I added the sample to the mixer and did an initial mix adjusting volume, distortion, and EQ. Next, I'll start building the mid bass. I moved some blocks an octave higher to create a bit more groove. Now I'm searching for a nice lead sound. I copied the bass melody to maintain the same rhythm as the bass. I usually do a rough mix of all the sounds during the production stage. Next, I automated the decay to add some character to the sound, making some notes longer and others shorter.
I also added automation for a reverb effect. For the vocal, I use Pan Man to create movement across the stereo field. Now I'll have some fun with the bass, finding a cool sound, etc. I tried to separate the sounds during the mix, ensuring everything is audible. Since I'll be adding a sub bass, I'm focusing the mid bass on the higher frequencies, filling in the low end with the sub. In this track, the lead is a bit low, so I'm trying to balance the bass and lead. I added a basic mastering at this stage nothing extraordinary, just a compressor, limiter, and ozone imager. I'll add another layer to my lead now. Here's a technique I recommend. After mixing the sounds, toggle the effect on and off to check if it actually improves the sound. Sometimes, we end up making things worse with effects that sounded better without them. Now I've added a sub bass in the form of an 808. 808s usually have a punch caused by a sudden pitch rise at the beginning, giving it more impact. Remember to listen to the mix as a whole, with all the sounds playing together. Next, I added all the synths to one channel to have better control over them as a group and to add sidechain. Then I added the kick. followed by a hat on the offbeat.
I layered the base to add some attack and character. Next, I added a clap. Along with the kick, I added a ride. I added some noise to the lead to enhance the higher frequencies. I moved the layer an octave higher. Now I'm adding an extra layer to the lead because I'm not quite satisfied yet. I highlighted the bass notes and added a stab at the beginning of each phrase.
I've also created breaks to fill the track with fills, stabs, etc. Additionally, I added some extra percussion to thicken the mix. To start, I added a downlifter. At the very end, I added an impact sound and applied a small sidechain to prevent the speakers from blowing up from the combined bass of the impact and kick. I also added an end shot from my pack.
I'll add a reverse effect created with reverb from the first few sounds. I added a crash because I felt it lacked impact at the start. I'll also add a vocal boost energy that I specifically prepared to thicken the mix and add more energy to the drop. We can also add automation to the formant on the alpha vocal to achieve a more interesting effect. And that's about it. I hope I've helped or inspired you in some way. Finally, I'd like to mention that I just released a new pack, a powerful collection of samples and serum presets. It's designed to make production easier and keep everything you need at your fingertips, suitable for any EDM genre. Without further ado, here's the final result.